Hello students, welcome to the lecture on introduction to financial management. After this lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain the importance of financial management. Describe the interrelation among financial decision. Explain the functional areas of modern financial management. Discuss the organization of the finance function and describe the objectives of financial management. Finance let us first know the meaning of financial management. Financial management is mainly concerned with the effective funds management in the business. Meaning of finance. Finance may be defined as the art and science of managing money. It includes financial service and financial instruments. The concept of finance includes capital, funds, money and amount. But each word is having unique meaning. Definition of finance. Finance is the art and science of managing money or the word finance connotes management of money. It is the science on study of the management of funds. Definition of business finance. Business finance is that business activity which concerns with the acquisition and conversation of capital funds in meeting financial needs and overall objectives of a business enterprise. Or it can be defined as the activity concerned with planning, raising, controlling, administering of the funds used in the business. At this point, why don't you take a look? Let me now explain to you the different types of finance. Finance can be classified into two major parts. Private finance, which includes the individual firm's business or corporate financial activities to meet the requirements and public finance which concerns revenue and disbursement of government such as central government, state government and semi-government financial matters. Definition of financial management Financial management is mainly concerned with effective funds management in the business. In simple words, financial management as practiced by business firms can be called as corporation finance or business finance. Though many definitions have been given to define it, it is concerned with the efficient use of an important economic resource, namely capital funds. Financial management deals with procurement of funds and their effective utilization in the business. Financial management as an application of general management principle to the area of financial decision making. It is an area of financial decision making, harmonizing individual motives and enterprise goals. Food. It's intimate. It goes into your body three times a day. It connects you with your friends. It can be delicious. It can keep you healthy. Uh, it can also give workers jobs with dignity. It could support a healthy planet. Are you interested in how selling that food works? This video helps you understand the financial side of how to sell food over long periods of time without going out of business. It goes over food business financials. If you're working on growing a cooperative food business, we suggest you have everyone you're working with watch this video together and get on the same page. If you're selling good food, it's tempting to try to sell it as cheap as you can. But what if a fridge breaks or you want to move into a new location? You'll need some money left over, and that's called profit. One reason food businesses go out of business pretty frequently is because their profit is typically so small. For a grocery store, profit is often as low as 1% of their sales. That means that after selling $100,000 in groceries, you only have $1,000 left over. So what if every month, let's say you don't account for $100 worth of bacon and kale donuts you're eating from the grab and go. After 10 months of losing money from sneaking donuts, the business would close. Let's get some language to talk about why that is. Let's learn about cost of goods sold, fixed costs, and contribution. Welcome to class. Fixed cost is the money you'll have to spend no matter how much food you sell. As your sales increase, this cost stays the same. It's fixed. So let's say you have rent for your storefront, a staff person, and maybe dry cleaning for your carrot costume. Your fixed costs would be that. Next, cost of goods sold is essentially how much you paid for what you're selling. And this amount obviously goes up depending on how much you sell. Next, 
the contribution that is the money contributed to keeping the store open is what's left over after paying the cost of goods sold. And this amount of money is really important to keep track of. More important than your sales even, because it's the amount that covers your fixed costs, keeps your doors open, and your dry cleaning clean. You can calculate this as a certain number of cents for every dollar you sell as a percentage. And we call that percentage your contribution margin. Let's play a little game to see if we get this. So you're selling a sandwich for $5 and you pay $2 for the food. What would your contribution margin be? Go ahead, pause the video and pencil it out. Did you get it? Three-fifths of the money is paying for staff and helping the store stay open. Two-fifths goes to the farmers, bakers, warehouse workers, truck drivers, and so on. So contribution is 60%. Okay, let's come back to our grocery store that's losing money and might close. What can we do? Well, one thing to check first is if different products have different contribution margins. Most successful businesses don't have the same margin for each product. That means that when someone comes in and buys shampoo or toothpaste with their bread, even though the store might not be making a lot of money on the bread, the contribution from the shampoo and the toothpaste will make up for it and keep the doors open. People might come into the store for bread, which only gives the store 20 cents on every dollar, but the shampoo, or generally the health and beauty section in a grocery, might give the business 60 cents on every dollar. Similarly, uh, coffee, or generally drinks like soda or alcohol in a prepared food business might give 80 cents on every dollar. Uh, these are examples of high contribution margin items that make it possible for the businesses to sell you the other stuff at prices that they do. But let's say you've done a pretty good job with pricing and you're still losing money. Well, you can try to sell more by getting feedback to improve and, and by doing marketing. You might ask people, for instance, what they're coming into the store for. For a cafe, your top sellers might be something like a fantastic vegan brownie or cheap fair trade coffee. Once you know what's actually bringing people to your store, you can help people talk to their friends about what they love through social media. Of course, there's more to marketing, but you don't need to be a professional to be good at it. Just get creative, consider. What would help your friends tell their friends about your food. All right, let's play another game. Let's say your grocery store has to pay $3,000 a month for rent, utilities, and a staff person. That's your fixed cost. And let's say you know that your cost of goods sold is gonna be 40%. Therefore, your contribution margin is 60%. So how much food would you need to sell to meet your fixed costs? Go ahead and pause it and pencil it out. That's right, you'd need to sell $5,000 a month in food. $2,000 of those dollars would pay for the bread and the coffee, and $3,000 would cover your fixed costs. That's called a break-even analysis. You take your fixed costs, and you set your average contribution margin, and then you can project how much you have to sell to stay open. If you still don't have enough sales to pay for your fixed costs, even though you're pricing things well and sales are great, the store's labor might be organized inefficiently, either by having people on staff at bad times or by having people uh, poorly trained. Sometimes this means you might need less people working at the store or people working fewer hours. These kinds of decisions are hard, so it's important to plan well before expanding or bringing new people on so you can avoid laying them off. All right, let's go back to our shampoo and bread and coffee for a second. When you combine all their contributions, you get an average or overall contribution margin. Now, knowing this amount is useful because there are standards for different businesses that you can compare yourself against to see roughly how you're doing on contribution margin. For instance, a large grocery store will often spend 64 cents on every dollar on cost of goods sold, 22 cents on labor, and 13 cents on rent utilities other fixed costs, leaving themselves with 1% in profit. That's right, it's actually 1%.
A prepared food business might round things out and target maybe 30 cents on cost of goods sold, 30 cents on labor, and 30 cents on other fixed costs, and try to leave themselves with 10% in profit. They probably need the extra margin because things can be really volatile for prepared food businesses. But now let's say we wanted to sell organic, local, fair trade food. That means that the cost of goods sold would probably go up as much as 50%. And what does that mean for our business model? That's right, the cost of goods would swallow our other business expenses, like a monster Pac-Man. Yep, just like that. So what can we do? Maybe we can have our customers pay more per item. As long as we sell the same amount of stuff, the pie, which represents sales, just gets bigger. But to do that, we'd have to have customers willing to pay more, and we'd have to make them feel like it was worth it. That's what Whole Foods does, and what nice organic restaurants do. They charge more, the pie gets bigger, and that covers the cost of goods sold, which increases. But if there's a strong community behind the business, and maybe one without a lot of money, we could also cooperatively pool labor, uh, maybe at a grocery store shelving things or doing really simple tasks at a cafe. Our volunteer worker members would get a discount or a food credit maybe. They might also make major decisions for the business, governing it cooperatively. And their labor would come out of our pie chart. And it would let our cost of goods rise without affecting prices. Because you would still have enough contribution to cover your other fixed costs with that more expensive food since you've taken out the labor. And if we're on campus, we can make a case to our landlords in the university that we're providing student leadership opportunities, creating community. We're really creating all sorts of benefits to the college, and they may choose to support us by minimizing rent, insurance, or our other fixed costs. And ta-da, you've got affordable, local, organic food. After you figure out what you're selling and how you're operating, setting targets for these different percentages in the pie chart is useful. If your fixed costs are higher than your target, then you can reduce them or increase sales or contribution. And if your cost of goods are too high, you can increase your prices or reduce the price you're paying for the items. Importance and scope of financial management. Some of the importance of the financial management is as follows. Financial planning. Financial planning helps to promotion of an enterprise, acquisition of funds. Financial management involves the acquisition of required finance to the business concern. Proper use of funds. Proper use and allocation of funds leads to improve the operational efficiency of the business concern. Financial decision. Financial management helps to take sound financial decision in the business concern. Improve profitability. Financial management helps to improve the profitability position of the concern with the help of strong financial control devices such as budgetary control, ratio analysis, cost volume, profit analysis. Increase the value of the firm. Ultimate aim of any business concern will achieve the maximum profit and higher profitability leads to maximum the wealth of the investors as well as the nation. Promoting savings. Effective financial management helps to promoting and mobilizing individual and corporate savings. Let us find out the scope of financial management. Financial management covers wide area with multi-dimensional approaches. The following are the important scope of financial management. Financial management and economics. Financial economic is one of the emerging area which provides immense opportunity to finance economical areas. Financial management and accounting. Accounting records includes the financial information of the business concern. Financial management or mathematics. Modern approaches of the financial management applied a large number of mathematical and statistical tools and techniques. They are also called as econometrics. Financial management and production management. Production management is the operational part of the business concern which helps to multiply the money into profit. Financial management and marketing. Produced goods are sold in the market with innovative and modern approaches. For this, the marketing department needs a finance to meet their requirements. Financial management and human resource. 
Financial management is also related with human resource department, which provides manpower to all the functional areas of the management. Hello, I am Jam, and I'm proud to be an entrepreneur. Wonder what my business is? Well, I supply fresh fruits, vegetables, groceries, and lots more. But not to forget, in doing business, financial management is very crucial. Yes, because owning a business is the easy part. Managing it, making it work, and seeing the bigger picture is the real challenge. So, here are four simple financial management tips to guide you as an entrepreneur. Let's have a look. Tips number one: anticipate and evolve. Yes, a lot of changes happen to the market nowadays. Big and unexpected changes in your market can cost a lot of money. Therefore, anticipate, adapt to changes, and plan ahead for this evolution. Tips number two. Efficient and effective. If you deliver quality on time and cost effectively, apply this efficiency to the financial management of your business too. Invoicing, payroll, taxes, insurance, and debt. Make sure these are clean and timely. Tips number three: positive cash flow. Having a positive cash flow is essential. But how to do it? Simple answer: provide good service. Build partnership and maintain excellent working relationship with your customers. Continue to supply what they expect, and you are likely to use more and pay more. And tips number four: Go social in marketing. Forget about doing marketing the old way, putting adverts into newspapers and onto radio. This is very costly. Twitter, Facebook, and emails are super cheap ways of reaching a big, broad audience. Simple and smart, right? So let's have a recap of what we have learned just now. Number one, anticipate and evolve. Number two, efficient and effective. Number three, positive cash flow. And finally, go social in marketing. So what are you waiting for? Follow these tips and let's get started. Interrelationship among financial decision. All the major function or decision, investment function, finance function, liquidity function, and dividend function are interrelated and interconnected. They are interrelated because the goal of all the function is one and the same. Their ultimate objective is only one: achievement of maximization of shareholders' wealth or maximizing the market value of the share. All the decisions are also interconnected or interdependent. Also. No function is superior. All the functions are important. Importance of the function depends on the situation of the firm. Nature of financial management. The nature of financial management is a relationship with economics and accounting, its function and its scope. The modern approach to financial management is to find out how much money is required by the company in question and then to source at least that amount. When raising finance, a financial management team should ensure that they strike a balance of owned and borrowed funds. An important decision of financial management is how much to pay the shareholders and how much to retain its working capital for the business. Functional areas of modern financial management. Some of the functional areas covered in financial management as determining financial needs. A finance manager is supposed to meet financial needs of the enterprise. For this purpose, he should determine financial needs of the concern, choosing the sources of funds. A number of sources may be available for raising funds. A concern may be resort to issue of share capital and debentures. Financial institutions may be requested to provide long-term funds. Financial analysis and interpretation. The analysis and interpretation of financial statement is an important task of a finance manager. He is expected to know about the profitability, liquidity position, short-term and long-term financial position of the concern. Cost volume profit analysis. This is popularly known as CVP relationship. For this purpose, fixed cost, variable cost, and semi-variable cost have to be analyzed. Working capital management. Working capital refers to that part of firm's capital which is required for financing short-term or current assets such as cash, receivables, and inventories. It is essential to maintain proper level of these assets. Dividend policy. Dividend policy is an important area of financial management because the interests of the shareholders and the needs of the company are directly related to it. Capital budgeting. 
Capital budgeting decisions are vital to any organization. Any unsound investment decision may prove to be fatal for the very existence of the concern. Organization of the finance function Finance function can be divided into three major decisions which a firm must make, namely the investment decision, the finance decision and the dividend decision. Investment decision it relates to the selection of assets in which funds are invested by the firm. Assets fall into two categories, long-term asset which fall yield, return over a period of time in future, short-term current assets which are convertible into cash in the normal course of business, usually within a year. The asset selection decision of a firm is of two types, capital budgeting decision. It is the most crucial financial decision of a firm which relates to the selection of an investment proposal whose benefits are likely to arise in future over the lifetime of the project. Liquidity decision The liquidity decision is concerned with the management of the current assets which is a prerequisite to long-term success of any business firm. The main objective of the current assets management is trade of between profitability and liquidity. Financing decision the second major decision of the firm is the financing decision for determining the best financing mix of the firm. It covers two interrelated aspects, capital structure theory and capital structure decision. Dividend decision. The dividend decision should be taken in terms of its impact on the shareholders' wealth. The optimum divided policy is one which maximizes the market values of share. Objectives of financial management. Objectives of financial management may be broadly divided into two parts such as profit maximization and wealth maximization. Profit maximization. Profit maximization aims at maximizes the profit of the concern. Profit maximization consists of the following important features. Profit maximization is also called as chasing per share maximization. Ultimate aim of the business concern is earning profit. It shows the entire position of the business concern. Help to reduce the risk of the business. Favorable arguments for profit maximization. The following important points are in support of the profit maximization objectives of the business concern. Main aim is earning profit. Profit is the parameter of the business operation. Profit reduces risk of the business concern. Profit is the main source of finance. Profitability meets the social needs also. Unfavorable arguments for profit maximization. Following important points are against the objectives of profit maximization. Profit maximization leads to exploiting workers and consumer. It creates immoral practices such as corrupt practices, unfair trade practices, etc. Its objectives leads to inequalities among the stakeholders such as customers, suppliers, public shareholders, etc. Drawbacks of Profit Maximization Profit maximization objective consists of certain drawbacks also. It is vague. It ignores the time value of money. It ignores risk. Wealth Maximization Wealth maximization is one of the modern approaches which involves latest innovation and improvements in the field of the business concern. Wealth maximization is also known as value maximization or net present worth maximization. Favorable arguments for wealth maximization. It's superior to the profit maximization because the main aim of the business concern under this concept is to improve the value or wealth of the shareholders. It considers a comparison of the value to cost associated with the business concern. It considers both time and risk of the business concern. It provides efficient allocation of resources. It ensures the economic interests of the society. Unfavorable arguments for wealth maximization. Wealth maximization leads to prescriptive idea of the business concern, but it may not be suitable to present day business activities. Is the indirect name of the profit maximization. It creates ownership, management controversy. Management alone enjoys certain benefits. The ultimate aim of the wealth maximization objective is to maximize the profit. Wealth maximization can be activated only with the help of the profitable position of the business concern. Summary. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. 
Finance is one of the important and integral part of business concern as it plays a major role in every part of the business activities. Financial management is concerned with the duties of the financial managers in the business firm. The nature of financial management is a relationship with economics and accounting, its functions and its scope. Profit maximization is also called as chasing per share maximization. It leads to maximize the business operation for profit maximization. Well maximization is one of the modern approaches which involves latest innovations and improvements in the field of the business concern.